More than a thousand scientists and medical professionals from across the world have banded together to warn us that even in its most diluted form, fluoride is still a poison and can harm your health. This is one pollutant that we capture in the phosphate fertilizer industry. And having captured it, we can't dump it into the sea, but we put it into our own drinking water. It's extraordinary. What fluoride in our water supply is a, a very real and ever-present risk to our population at large. A radical view that's made Adelaide dentist Dr Andrew Harms a renegade among his colleagues and the professional body he wants headed in South Australia. The ADA um, and uh, other uh, dental professional groups will not speak to anybody from the anti-fluoridation side but I've been asked to uh, not refer to myself as a, a past president of the Dental Association of South Australia. In fact, I'm no longer a member uh, of the Dental Association over this issue. Dr Harms has joined the growing movement of public discontent about adding fluoride, a potent poison in its most concentrated form, to our drinking water. The, the chemical fluoride itself is dangerous, but also I'm concerned about the arsenic levels and the lead levels as a result of these chemicals being dumped in the water supply. Alarm bells have been ringing about the health risks, some from credible scientific sources like Emeritus Professor Paul Connett. So here we've got 1,100 scientists saying we've read the scientific literature, we say there's a problem. And now what we should get from the other side is a very careful consideration of these reports and a scientific explanation. But we don't get that. All we get is a continuation of this propaganda, this simplistic PR. It's safe and effective, safe and effective, safe and effective. If they repeat it enough times with a white coat on it, everybody's supposed to believe them. The only argument about this is whether we have an adequate margin of safety. And I would stake my scientific career on the, on the fact that there is no adequate margin of safety. For decades, Americans associated fluoride with good dental hygiene, which is why it's still added to most public water supplies. But today, 600 health professionals and scientists, including Dr. Arvid Carlson, a Nobel laureate of medicine, are calling on Congress to ban the use of fluoride immediately. Among the petitioners, Bob Carton, a former Environmental Protection Agency scientist. He says fluoridating water was a mistake from the beginning. It was a foolish thing to do years ago. They didn't have enough information. They hadn't really been tested. In fact, a 2005 Centers for Disease Control study found too much fluoride has caused irreversibly discolored teeth in one out of three children. And a major report by the National Academy of Sciences says toxic levels can lead to severe permanent pitting of the enamel in children. Fluoride can also build up in the bones to cause pain, stiff joints, and skeletal abnormalities when they get older. It's a cumulative poison. It just gradually builds up and it gradually causes harm. In 2006, a report by the National Academy of Sciences identified fluoride as a potent hormone disruptor that can affect your thyroid and potentially lower the IQ of children. Currently, 66% of United States residents who rely on public water supplies are exposed to the most consumed drug in the nation, fluoride. Some recent studies suggest that overconsumption of fluoride can raise the risk of disorders affecting teeth, bones, the brain, and the thyroid glands. After three years of reviewing hundreds of studies, a National Research Council committee concluded that fluoride can subtly alter endocrine function, especially in the thyroid, the gland that produces hormones regulating growth and metabolism. Fluoride found in foods, beverages, medicines, and dental products can result in fluoride overconsumption. This is most visible in young children as dental fluorosis, white-spotted, yellow, brown, and or pitted teeth. Epidemiological studies and tests on lab animals suggest that high fluoride exposure increases the risk of bone fracture, especially in vulnerable populations such as the elderly and diabetics. A scientist at a leading dental research institute in Boston, Dr. Phyllis Mullinex, exposed rats to fluoride to work out its effects on the human brain and the central nervous system. The pattern that we saw it typically is what we see with other neurotoxic agents that are well known to cause a hypoactivity. 
or uh, a memory problem or an IQ problem. When I first presented the results of these studies, um, one of the uh, individuals sitting and listening to the results, he says, do you have any idea what you're saying? And he says, you're telling us that we're reducing the IQ of children. Last November, concerns over excess fluoride prompted the American Dental Association to warn parents not to mix baby formula with tap water during an infant's first 12 months. And for years, the Food and Drug Administration has required warning labels to keep toothpaste out of the reach of children under six, and if swallowed, to get medical help or contact a poison control center right away. Elaine Valentine couldn't understand why she was able to lead a normal, healthy life in her hometown, but whenever she headed to Melbourne and drank the water, she'd come home a very sick woman. I feel lousy, and I get very lethargic, couldn't care less about anything. Uh, very, very tired and very, very wheezy and just be, feel plain ill. Elaine consulted a natural therapist who recognised immediately that something was seriously wrong. When we went back to the, to the hospital, um, she then did the testing and was absolutely shocked to see a severe asthmatic reaction that Elaine had where her lung function dropped to a quarter of its normal uh, volume when she actually drank the glass of water with the fluoride added to it. Dr Philip Robertson says up to 200,000 Australians may be suffering from an intolerance to fluoride and not realise it, with symptoms ranging from headaches or indigestion to chronic arthritis. If somebody's taking fluoride and they suspect there's a link between their symptoms, it's a matter of getting them off the fluoride and watching to see if there's an improvement. And Elaine's not his only client painful joints and initially sore throat and swollen glands. Retiree Carmel Stringer says she's been suffering from hypersensitivity to fluoride for nearly 30 years, which has drastically restricted her lifestyle. She's had to fork out hundreds of dollars for a reverse osmosis water filter, the only way to remove fluoride in the home, but says it's restored her health. Questions about the safety of fluoride in drinking water are not new, but now the debate has shifted to Harvard University, where a professor and his doctoral student are at odds over research, research that could show a link between fluoride in drinking water and bone cancer in boys. The professor doesn't think there's a connection, but his opinion is under scrutiny, since he's also a paid consultant for the toothpaste industry. Dr. Chester Douglas, a Harvard University big shot, He's chairman of the Department of Oral Health Policy and Epidemiology at Harvard School of Dental Medicine. And he's at the center of a fluoride debate, the question of whether fluoride in drinking water can cause cancer, specifically osteosarcoma in boys. Hi, Dr. Douglas. Mike Bodet with Fox 25. We wanted to talk to you about the fluoride controversy. I just was uh, talking to the lawyers about the freedom of information, so we're going to give, a, give all our studies to them. The dispute erupted last year when the Washington-based Environmental Working Group raised serious allegations, accusing Dr. Douglas of possibly covering up the link between fluoridated water and cancer. The, the question is very simple. Did he represent the research correctly or did he not? Ken Cook is Environmental Working Group's president. He points to a thesis done by one of Dr. Douglas's own students. Dr. Elise Basson found, for males less than 20 years old, Fluoride level in drinking water during growth is associated with an increased risk of osteosarcoma. But according to Cook, Dr. Douglas dismissed any link when he presented this final report to the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences. Uh, Dr. Basson's study found some very compelling evidence that there's a risk uh, of bone cancer uh, from fluoridation in water. And the presentation of her research suggested the, the opposite, that there was no evidence. The Environmental Working Group has raised concerns about Dr. Douglas's close ties to toothpaste giant Colgate, pointing to his job as editor-in-chief of the Colgate Oral Care Report. Fox Undercover has learned Dr. Douglas has also worked as a consultant for Colgate for the last 10 years. The company has paid him tens of thousands of dollars. Tony Valentine is watching the controversy closely. It's personal. His son Seth died 20 years ago after a painful battle with osteosarcoma. Seth grew up in Dedham, one of 137 communities in Massachusetts that adds fluoride to the water. 
Valentine says he wants to know more about any connection between fluoridated water and cancer. What do you think about this possible link? When I first heard that, I was, I was kind of shocked because I knew that we used the denim water and I knew there was fluoride in it. Valentine says even the suggestion of a link is disturbing. Dr. Basson declined to be interviewed, but she's standing by her work and tells Fox Undercover a paper based on her thesis will soon be published in the Journal of Cancer Causes and Control. A Harvard spokesman tells us its investigation is ongoing. This is the federal government continues its own investigation.